this talk. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, let's start my session. Uh, my name is Kyung Jin Yu. I'm working in the University of Maryland College Park. And let me start my talk. Uh, creating virtual culture for art and museum. So let me start with looking at art first. Are you familiar with this artwork? And let's do this some contemplative experience kind of relax yourself. guides you through an exploration of slow looking and sensing and offers you the opportunity to deepen your relationship with this artwork right here, right now. Begin by moving around and exploring the Rothko room. As you wander, discover what draws you, what feels more or less compelling. So this is a one uh, new approach that Philips Collection, the museum that I work with, uh, they have the Rosco room for uh, contemplation and the one uh, psychologist and yoga instructor create some audio uh, sound to listen to this sound while, while, while they are uh, sitting or standing inside the Rosco room. So this is kind of a one kind of a goal of a museum to provide some stress-free and the lighting, relaxation. The placement of canvases. Okay, let me stop. So, but not all people are looking for artwork and going to the museum for that specific reason. Probably different people or different culture or different situation people want to look at the artwork for uh, uh, several different occasions. And, and between generation, across the generation and culture, uh, they might have different uh, needs or uh, goal to visit the museum and looking for the artwork. So when the situation changes and new technology comes out, the new generation, they are really comfortable with using a smartphone or some other devices, even while they are uh, going to the museum. And also, uh, this, uh, this new uh, environment or uh, atmosphere kind of will help that kind of new, new generation or new uh, audience. So we are uh, looking for solution how to uh, reach those different people and different purpose or goal. So we want to uh, improve the experience of museum visitors and help diverse audience more deeply understand and appreciate work of art. And using the uh, potential new and emerging technologies. And why museum and art? Uh, the new technology like VR, AR, kind of help you to experience some immersive and interactive experience. So art, I think, originally want to uh, reach different audience, more uh, immersive, providing more immersive experience and appreciation, also some interaction or communication with audience. So uh, this is a good uh, combination, how new technology can be used for that goal of art and museum. And also another thing that I found, uh, new technology needs some innovation and creativity. And art also needs some innovation and creativity. There is no constraint, uh, constraints or limitation. So emerging technology could help to art communicate with the audience. Also audience can understand and appreciate art uh, better and uh, uh, or good way or future in the future, the new technology could uh, improve their experience. So this is one uh, quote that I got from the Philips collection. So art can be a playground for the imagination. So uh, new technology can help that 
for improving the or elevating the imagination. So my group uh, work on the research, do uh, conduct research, how can museum use emerging technology to engage visitors in the 21st century or in the future. So can technology uh, medit meditate the best possible experience for visitors, not distracting them? And that's the concern, or using some other uh, technology inside the museum. And how does technology provide a platform for contribution, collaboration, and co-creation or co-opting for e experience among all uh, diverse visitors? And also, how do multimedia, social media, or other new media uh, used by museum engage and educate visitors, but also reach some distant uh, audience remotely. So we uh, think about and explore the intersection of art, museum, and technology. And we try to discover new ways to help people engage with and learn from works of art and create in, in inventive and sustainable product and combine with current theory and practice in museum technology and museum education. So basically, our, our research group uh, try to cover not only technology, but also museum and museum studies and art history and art itself. So let's do some one more experiment, because I want you to have some immersive experience. This is the whole goal of XR. So I'll, my talk needs to be immersive, so I want to, you to participate. And let's simulate this as if you entered one of the museum in the gallery space, and now you are standing in front of one artwork that I'm showing after this slide. And look at this art as if you are it at the museum gallery room. And I will uh, show some clock. Don't be distracted by the clock, but as long as you want to see the artwork and write the time, the exact time, the when you want to leave the artwork for the next one, when you simulate in the museum, and check the clock, like how long you uh, watch the, uh, the look at the artwork. Okay, now more interaction. So can you respond how long did you enjoy if you are at the museum and standing in front of that artwork? Could you type to show and share your experience, respond to this web browser or text to this number? This is interaction that we hope to achieve It's K J Y zero. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, right. Oh. K J Y O two seven nine.
So have you ever been curious how long people looking at the artwork that you are looking at and how, much, how long time is enough or appropriate? Are you, are you comfortable with standing in front of artwork while people kind of pass by? Or people still there, but I want to leave, but I cannot leave because they are there. So <laughs> that kind of information, uh, would it help? How can we share that kind of information? So you respond to uh, this uh, kind of experiment and I, when I went to the uh, museum and gallery and artwork exhibition, I was wondering like, how people, how long they stay and what people are thinking. What I'm thinking is uh, similar to others or different. So that kind of communication or what if we want to communicate with artists when you are standing in front of the museum, the artwork. So how long does the average person spend looking at artwork in a museum? Scientists, that's the scientist. They determine the exact amount of time when, when uh, one should look at the artwork in order to understand. Well, four minutes, eight seconds. Do you agree? <laughs> No, it's highly subjective. It, dep it depends on, totally depends on person and artwork and some atmosphere or some situation or culture. There are many factors, so. But uh, there's a, some study uh, and survey and between about uh, 15 to 30 seconds. So all of you probably inside of that boundary that average people uh, look at this artwork. So why I, I'm doing this and uh, because I'm looking at art and museum st studies and technology. So in order to provide good technology and good experience, we have to understand art and how people observe or perceive the artwork. So I look at the time and, and also I look at the, what's the process or behavior or pro, of the process of a human perceived artwork beginning of the standing of the artwork and until they are leaving the artwork. So this is a good study that I found. So it started with a look and observe and see, describe, analyze, and interpret. So what is look? It's a physical act. Basically, you put yourself in front of artwork. And observe is they start, they start looking at the visual elements of artwork. And see is a mental process of perception and recognizing or connecting information that you, your eyes take in. And describe, now human starts identifying and describing the element of art they found in the object uh, step. And analyze, they start to make meaning and then collect all the information together to tell a story and interpret a uh, process uh, step is combining your description and analysis with your previous knowledge or information uh, about the artwork or artist or yourself. And then the uh, human comes to the conclusion. So when I look over the, this whole process, I kind of keep thinking how technology can come in, come in each step or between, or how to improve each step of perception. And what's the visual elements or elements of art? You need to understand a basic 
of art, the color, lines, shape, space, texture. And principle of design, balance, emphasis, harmony, movement, proportion, rhythm, unity, variety, and analyze how to find the form and what's the symbols of each element, what's the idea that artists want to deliver or perceive a meaning. And interpretation is the final step. Uh, some scene of this fleet, what does it represent, and the image of death as the great book Nature Speaks of It, or documentation of this uh, art history or backgrounds. And that's uh, about the art that we investigate to get some idea how to uh, provide the better uh, experience using technology. And we look at the museum. Uh, that's the physical space that all things happening between art and uh, artists and uh, visitors and audience. So we try to. Uh, understand the visitors. And I found uh, some good kind of understanding of a category of the visitors based on the goal and purpose of a museum visit. So explorers, facilitators, and ex experience seekers, professional, or hobbyist. So one person not necessarily uh, go to the, goes to the museum with one uh, category, depends on the situation or uh, uh, some different reason. They can go with the uh, parents, they can go with the, because of a, a school project or because of their job or when they are traveling, it's easily they check out the museums to understand the better of the culture on that country. And yeah, the, the other types people describe the museum visitors depends on timing or the pattern. So when I look at the, the types of the museum visitors, uh, the one museum or one exhibition is all uniformly set up, no matter like what type of museum visitors and what type of uh, goals or they are visiting. So and I was, we were thinking like technology can differentiate those types of museum visitors or how to adapt the museum setting with different technology for better, like customize or personalized experience. So that helped to uh, set up our specific goal of a, for the specific target of a museum visitors. And also the study of our visitor pattern, physical pattern when they visit the museum. So uh, people uh, explore or investigate the the museum visitors path, the route, physical route when they visit the museum, and what individual path they uh, follow. And they found uh, they spend very little time in front of individual objects. Almost all visitors stop and only a fraction of objects on display. And after 15 or 20 minutes of a visit, they usually, uh, kind of lost their attention and then kind of fatigue, feel the fatigue and then they speed up the, their route after all. That kind of pattern uh, kind of help us what's the focus and what's the goal of the technology when we uh, want to improve that experience. And timing, uh, as I did the experiment, that kind of uh, the measurement, the quantity of the, uh, the museum visitors experience. So we have to consider quantity of museum visitor experience, also quality of the museum experience, so timing 
kind of a quantitative regime experience, how to, uh, ho how much we can uh, increase the time, how well we can hold the museum visitors to spend more time to look at the whole museum uh, exhibition. And also the total number of visitors, how to increase the uh, number of visitors. So what do you think about like successful exhibition after all of this kind of measurement and tracking and the types of visitors? I was curious, so we want to improve the museum experience and art experience. What's the goal, like how we can measure like success of that? So that was the initial like goal and also question. So there's some study, interesting study in 1993. So it's kind of reasonable. Um, they kind of uh, concern, also really uh, care about the, the space. So one museum I uh, went to recently, uh, they really care about the space of an individual, uh, feel comfortable to look at the artwork. Uh, each artwork, so they measure the space of a gallery, and then they assign the number of visitors based on the space. So they want to guarantee the rate of, a kind of ideal space for individual visitor. And also, they uh, conclude with uh, that exact number but it will change over time or some different uh, situation, but 51% of the visitors stop to attend at least 51% of the exhibits. Ex ex exhibits. So the, we, the number probably changed, but uh, each exhibition can set up some goal of these numbers. And also, this is a quantity, but qualitatively, Visitor can correctly quote or recall specific facts, attitudes, or concepts related to the exhibition elements or exhibition objectives. So that's about museum. So it uh, provides us some elements or some recipe how to improve the museum uh, experience and how to uh, better serve the museum audience. And technology, so this uh, conference all <coughs> dealing with uh, AR or VR, but there are more uh, technology we can u utilize for this research goal. So how to enable multimedia and hypertextual hyper reflection, and how to ease management and archiving, and how to offer the Rapid, rapid feedback and facilitating collaborative learning and scaffolding the learning process and interact with new audience. So we consider the virtual reality and augmented reality and location intelligence using Beacon or, and Internet of Things, AI, machine learning, visualization, and human-computer human interaction. So we kind of set up all technology we can use and which technology will be good fit to cover some challenge we are facing in terms of uh, art appreciation or artwork, uh, understand or learning art, also how to make the museum exhibition successful. Also, we study about some trends of technology. So, this is very general, like modern uh, users uh, prefer simplified interfaces, interfaces, personalized and contextual interaction, and empathic, empathetic content, and persistent and blended sensory experiences. So when we uh, set up everything, we also consider this kind of trend, so museum visitor can um, comfortable uh, with the technology we provide. So we start with some really, really basic uh, question and uh, 
some ideas, and starting from that, then uh, we branch out and explore further, or sometimes we combine different um, technology together. So I will show some our initial prototype of uh, our research project. Uh, using VR, AR, you can think of easily that we can provide some uh, augmented reality, the exhibition of a painting right inside of your uh, place. And also, uh, we try out 360 expansion of artworks. So using your smartphone or cardboard, you can look around all around you to look at the bigger scale of artwork. And also, in virtual reality, we set up some our own design of a gallery and put our own selection of artwork. That's the initial step. And location intelligence, we use the Raspberry Pi and uh, Beacon and track the museum visitors and also provide uh, the information or textual information or audio information right at the spot the museum visitors are standing. And this is some initial kind of a setup to collect the museum visitors' information, like visitors per day and average minutes spent per room and visit the number of visits per room. That kind of uh, information you could collect, as I showed you in uh, museum studies, the timing and path is the uh, some information we could collect about the museum visitors. And this is a, uh, some project we tried. So uh, these days, many museums provide some audio guide, but either you have to call the number right next to the artwork or using their own audio guide. But using uh, Beacon uh, technology, we can uh, promptly provide audio guide when you hold your, your own uh, smartphone. So this is a, a project we did. Also visualize the old metadata of artwork. <clears throat> so the data visualization is a like big trend um, quite in the uh, past few years. And we try to visualize those uh, art metadata uh, in VR. So you can create some three-dimensional axis uh, in terms of a period, a period of time of that art were, were created and the country and some genres. So you can uh, visualize the whole metadata information. And we uh, try some uh, digital modeling as well. So how to create a 3D version of a painting and also pixel by pixel, we analyze the pixel information, RGB value, so uh, merge two painting, you do have to analyze those data to combine the style of two different uh, paintings. Also, obviously, the storytelling, using Van Gogh story, we designed whole, uh, the space that Van Gogh painted, so this was, uh, right after the, the movie that um, Living Van Gogh. Yeah, so the whole professional artists uh, create uh, the animation using real painting. So we pick up that idea to create real virtual reality space to tell the story of uh, one artist. And as I briefly showed the image, uh, how to personalize your uh, museum experience. So uh, the artwork, especially media art, not necessarily set up in the museum space. Uh, or curator can set up some different um, environment as they want. The media art, especially you need the projector, you need the sound, so you have to protect, protect one space exclusively. So there are lots of uh, cost to assign that space and uh, protect the audio out the inside of that space. So this is a good fit that we are can uh, curate uh, the media art limited limit, limitless uh, 
without any constraint. So also uh, you, the audience themselves or professional curator can control the, the environment, uh, also control the, all the mood that uh, audience uh, ex experience. And we try uh, to create some tools uh, that uh, art students or artists that create artwork. So tilt brush uh, was uh, popular uh, in past few years, but uh, the, some artists, media or contemporary artists uh, started using that uh, virtual reality tool to create artwork in VR uh, space. So we kind of try to create some palette and also we create some elements of an object to build a sculpture. So this is some prototype we start with and I will show you the end result uh, using that. So <clears throat> I will show some, um, some meaningful uh, outcome that we produced for past few years. So one example that I'm sharing now is the uh, AR uh, application that uh, young generation or some uh, general public can use to better understand uh, one painting like this, Luncheon of Boring Party. So when you go to the museum, um, even though this is a popular painting, but you need some information, either reading books or catalog or listen to the story of, uh, from the uh, curator or museum staffs. But instead, uh, there are many limitations because uh, each museum or gallery or exhibition by exhibition, they set up some specific time and location to listen to the story. Uh, but we created some AR application to, for general public using their own smartphone or tablet and once they scan the artwork, then we provide some interactive, interactive uh, information, some general information of artwork. And as you might know, the figure inside of this painting, or like well known, or some related with the painter, artist uh, himself. So you should uh, choose the each part or point of painting, so interactively or dynamically, they can check out the information. So it can be applicable for many other parts that we look at the elements of artwork, so line, color, balance, all different um, part you, we can provide as we want. So um, general public, what, whatever they are interested in, they can choose the uh, types of uh, information. So this can provide some personalized and customized information, more uh, entertainment way or dynamic uh, method. So we luckily uh, had a chance to uh, present our work in CGREP in this year and some events uh, hosted in the University of Maryland and some our research conference, so we put our uh, work as a demo and we try out several uh, visitors of that event. They're really interested in this uh, application and they're really uh, attracted by this uh, painting itself. And the result showing uh, they quite easily use this application without any guidance or tutorial. And the next application is more artistic uh, interpretation that um, young generation can uh, uh, enjoy to get looking at the artwork. So we started with some basic prototype. We started with some scanned artwork and provide some information as we did in the other uh, project. But after then, it's automatically 
create some uh, 3D uh, representation. It's auto automatically created, so we can represent some color, tone, or different elements of art. So visually, the uh, human can better understand of the artwork. Also, they fi find automatically some music in the, that era and that reason. So this is American art in 1956. So we search some online uh, archive. So they provide some uh, music for free uh, based on the year and country. So the music played and they can provide some exact mood what, when the artwork is created in that uh, country. And we, uh, I invited some uh, exhibitions, so that was the scene that we exhibit that application. So this is a kind of artistic uh, interpretation of uh, the existing art, new interpretation. And some Instagram user, they really liked it, and then they recorded and uploaded their Instagram. So it, it proves that some, we attract some new audience. And this is about the location intelligence. So because of time, I will speed up a little bit. So, so indoor navigation is quite challenging. Uh, I'm not sure you've tried with uh, Google Map indoor. It's not quite accurate. So especially the museum setting, the artwork between artwork is very close. And the one uh, gallery room, is quite, the, quite next to each other. So we uh, try to uh, explore some technology to provide really accurate guidance. And not only the guidance, but also using beacon technology, we can advertise some uh, additional exhibition related with their own, the person or their own interest. So while they are looking for artwork, they are looking, um, initially they set up some destination, the artwork they are looking for, and on the way, uh, we can gather some information, personal information, uh, voluntarily from the uh, user, so we can kind of provide a which exhibition or artwork might be interested on the way to the final destination. Also, in this project, we also consider uh, when people visit the museum, usually they set up some time, like how, how long I'm going to uh, spend in the museum, also what artwork they are interested in and they want to check out. That's the initial uh, plan, but how to plan that uh, initial kind of goal of the museum visit is maximize the time and their attention. As I showed you in the museum studies, after 15 or 20 minutes, they are really tired and fatigued, so they speed up some missing some artwork they originally uh, intend to see and check out. So, so beforehand, we uh, collect the personal uh, information or goal, and then this guidance can adapt their route or time or duration of a stay in one artwork, so plan accordingly like a Google map. So when you uh, put some uh, stop, uh, the several stops, uh, Google Maps uh, provides some maximum or uh, ideal and efficient route. So that kind of a goal we want to achieve. So we compare with the Google Map how accurate they are and how efficient they are in terms of the distance or also in terms of the time. This project, uh, we want to uh, explore how environment the affect the, uh, the museum visitor uh, experience and the understanding. So we set up two extreme cases. The one uh, uh, really peaceful and bright uh, uh, sunny day in the garden and the other very dark and scary the environment, and then we 
did some uh, experiment with uh, uh, several users and how they feel. So this showed uh, how much did you appreciate the looking at art in different two extreme cases. How much do you think the environment made you feel that certain way? So this could help to uh, the study of the curation or uh, museum designs. And this is a more personalized uh, gallery setting. So they filter out the online the artwork using the period of time. Oops. Sorry. So once filter out, they exhibit that artwork they selected in their own the VR space. This is a web VR, so you can use your own smartphone browser or laptop browser. And using cardboard, you can experience a VR view. And not only selecting the artwork, but also design the art gallery space uh, by changing the color or texture. And then the uh, user can save the gallery and share with friends or keep it for the record for themselves. And also the uh, user can select the artwork by country and doing the same thing. And next project using a 360, vi 360 video camera. So instead of uh, creating a digital model of all Meditation the environment and yoga teacher and, Elizabeth Cantor uh, guides you through a contemplative we, experience of the nowadays the 360 Rothko video room. camera is a really good uh, quality and, and concludes with a bell. reasonable price. For so we try out uh, taking record of inside of a Philips collection, and this then this contemplative experience guides some, you through an explanation uh, potential, of potential slow audience who cannot go to the museum at that time and, and that yoga place. Teacher, Elizabeth but Cantor uh, we can archive any uh, exhibition and lunch save it for later this visit or later uh, use. And concludes with a bell. So we uh, the best listening put some deep headphone use four different uh, exhibition or spaces uh, in the museum. This contemplative experience sitting guides you through at the chair, exploration they can explore a whole uh, area, whole different offers you the time of the exhibition or space of exhibition. With this artwork right here, right now, And one good usage I'm thinking uh, is here in exploration. Yeah, that kind of art performance or artist talk, we can save it and archive it. And anytime you just pick up the headphone, the headset, and watch it or listen to it. And we try uh, some uh, walk right now? Uh, or and stand. explore some spaces and. And also, we create some law school artists and embed inside the law school room. So this is the exact model, looks like law school. So law school can talk to you about that artwork. And also, very minimum of technology, we can create some animation. I'm not sure you can see it. So using parallax approach, you, we can animate some artwork, looks like a 3D uh, view. So we try that as well. And the final project I'm sharing is Minecraft VR for art and museum. So I showed you like VR art work, but using kind of interactive uh, creation and collaboration. So Minecraft is a good uh, platform that we think also young generation is really uh, into it. So we designed some art gallery using the Philips Collection artwork and then uh, some game uh, fact game form, form, format, we uh, embedded it. So in order to uh, finish the game, they have to collect some seven clues, like a scavenger hunt form, format. So by doing all of those missions, they have to understand the artwork 
they have to understand some elements or history of artwork or some information related with the artwork or artist. So by playing the game, they actually learn about the artwork. And after collecting all seven uh, clues, they coming back to the center of the space by uh, complete, completing the mission, uh, they collect whole uh, art material. So they are uh, usually creating their own sculpture using those uh, material they collected. So this is a hands-on experience after running the artwork and artists and they do their artwork, basic artwork. Uh, so we presented this work in the CGRAB and VRST and we test out young generation and old generation. When we set up in the booth in the CGRAB, usually like teenagers and 20s, they are really into Minecraft. They are not into the artwork, but they come by, come by and play this game and they learn about the artwork and the hands-on experience. So actually it was success to attract some people who are not interested in art, but interest the Minecraft. So we evaluate their uh, uh, feedback. So they are quite positive using this game form that they are familiar with. And because of that event on conference, usually the most a majority of people are in 20s or teenagers. I think time, yeah, two minutes, okay. So this is uh, some work to create in the virtual space using AR. So we think art, visual art and audio art is comes together really well. So we match with some elements of all, uh, music elements into the art element and then user ex ex experience or explore their own uh, intuition to create artwork in the AR space, augmented reality, and each element match to the other element in other uh, field. So they repeat as a DJ uh, tool. So to sum up, uh, we look at the art in traditional way and some new way using emerging technology. So I want to point out some, some uh, facts very similar to each other, but some facts is quite different. So we have to better understand the characteristic of the VR and VR uh, media itself, also art in the VR. So Art experience should be immersive and interactive, so the VR is quite good fit in that uh, perspective. Also, there's a lot of potential using VR. Uh, if you are familiar with the technology in digital uh, asset and the programming um, codes or data, is quite uh, efficient or good to save and archive the whole like history or version, so it can be applicable to your art as well, and museum and the, uh, the art curation. So that kind of a characteristic of a realist uh, uh, big advantage using digital form, and that could be really uh, going well uh, with uh, VR or AR. So we incorporated a new technology, especially focusing on VR and AR or Internet of Things. And we uh, are doing some, uh, some uh, we are currently extending that toward the machine learning or AI to provide more customized and personalized experience. And this is a list of our project, our list, um, we've done and then presented in the many academic uh, conference and symposiums. And we are working with uh, 
some undergraduate uh, student mostly, and they are quite new to the art, but they are interested in the technology mostly, but their background is quite diverse. Uh, many computer science students, but also some other engineering uh, department or art major or uh, some humanities or business major and communication major. So we, uh, we try to teach and educate them by doing this research. So they kind of enjoy learning about art and museum and intersection between art and technology. And they're also learning to uh, explore some new technology as well. So it was quite successful to uh, work with young people. And they are quite creative and innovative, so they provide really good and new, fresh idea. And our uh, goal is to attract that generation so they know what they like and they know what they don't like. So we travel uh, to uh, present our work. And actually, the, do you know this guy? The Brandon Neely, the founder of uh, Oculus, and he uh, visited our campus and our student met with him and showing our work. So it was great, quite fun um, uh, experience that student actually happened to meet the founder of Oculus after they worked with uh, Oculus. And this whole project and research is supported by uh, University of Maryland Computer Science Department and UMEX and the Phillips Collection. And I work uh, in the uh, museum that our family runs. So we have annual events that hosting the uh, contemporary art and we exhibit our work there uh, in the Art Teleport in New York. And thank you for your attention and <laughs> any question? Yeah, that's a good point. And many of our students and myself uh, think, think about that a lot. And when we did some project of personalized museum, we look at how uh, the company or some product, like successful uh, product, personalized the uh, service, for example, Amazon, Spotify, and Netflix. We, uh, study about that algorithm and their approach. And first of challenge, we don't have that much data, like Spotify or Amazon. So even though we collect data, it's quite limited. In order to get there, we need some data to collect. So that's the challenge in our research group, how to collect that much data to provide that good quality of service. Second of all, I myself, argue a lot with museum studies, professional and artist. Uh, we are not sure yet is the good way to provide based on the popularity and interest. Art, especially fine art, is a little bit different from commodity or kind of sales in the market. They really, the, the, for example, Yelp, Amazon, they don't worry about some uh, the kind of intellectual uh, curation 
or what to deliver, what's the educational contents. They just rely on how make big money and profit, how to sell, how much they can sell. But art and curation is a little bit different. Gallery probably work on that direction, but museum uh, curator and artist and professional really care about the quality of their service, not based on the popularity and how to make profit. So that's the conflict. Of course, the understanding the visitors and the which art is more popular than the others, that could help the museum and artist how to make their artwork successful and popular. But there's some risk if they rely on that too much, then it's not fine art anymore. It's kind of a product. Yeah. Yep. So I, I went to the Renwick over lunch today, and they have an exhibit in there right now that has the AR element. And I was, as I, I just didn't know, I just happened into it. And as I was viewing this, you, you, there's stumps in the mold, or you're crawling your iPad over, and these flowers grow out of them in, in AR. Mm -hmm. And I realized after a couple of minutes of looking at several of these that I had not paid any attention to the real thing. I was so engaged by the 3D model and the experience of Yeah, yeah. So that's the what I uh, mentioned in the beginning, how to engage them and educate them, but not distract them. Yeah. So that's the challenge. Also, my student, if they are uh, expertise in technology, then they are not expertise or professional in the art. So when they create some 3D model, it kind of will ruin the art probably easily. So that's why we kind of automate everything. So there's a no like subjective interpretation or some distraction or distortion of art. So 3D version of art is totally new art. So let's say there's a very popular project how to create the, they created Dream of Dali 3D version, but original painting and 3D version of Dream of Dali is a different art. So when you create some AR art, probably the uh, AR uh, element itself is the art. So professional artists, digital artists should create it. So if that AR element is more attractive and more popular, probably the audience interested in that AR art, not the painting. So if they want to show the painting itself, probably they use some different approach, not 3D model, but some uh, storytelling or some information about this painting itself. So, yeah, that's the, some different kind of thing that I, yep. Yeah, if you have any questions, just please talk to me and thanks for your attention. And <laughs>